There's such a thing as hide and seek and Marco Polo and catch me if you can. And they're all about rivers long, long ago. The Murray River, the mightiest stream in Australia. Its catchment extends from southern central Queensland 4,000 kilometres from its mouth, from head to tail, longer than just about any country in Europe. And we all know that it exits near Goolwa, down past what were once the lower lakes. But it wasn't always so. The Murray once stopped where Swan Reach is today, where it drained into an inland sea. Then the earth moved, uplift, and it flowed again. There was once a time when it actually went into Spencer Gulf. It flowed out to sea near present-day Port Piri. And when Matthew Flinders, the great navigator and explorer, circumsailed the Great South Land in 1802, he failed to find its mouth, even though his charts are so accurate that two centuries later we still use them, the Murray Mouth is missing. In fact, the mouth might move further down the Coorong and then back up. We're talking long time frames here, geological time frames, and while the river hides its past, we seek and find the answers in rocks. And while we find that the Murray also played catchy, it captured other streams like the Goulburn River. And this is important because of little fish. Australia's river systems are isolated from each other. Fish evolve differently in different parts of Australia. And fish in the Murray are different from those in rivers which flow east into the Pacific Ocean. And this is important because while we know much about the flow of the Murray from five million years ago, we know much less about its ecology today and how to ensure that native fish species survive. They've been here since flinders, since humans, since mountains were made. We pass through history rather than, rather than make it, and those little fish endangered because of 21st century Murray mismanagement might wish that we take the longer view.